I'm not sure how I'm starting this video anymore. Why? 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 adventure board game to choose my TBR. We roll the dice eight times. At each time I land on a color and I have to choose a book based on that color's prompt. And if I land on a plain brown spot, I have I get to roll again, but if I land on three plain brown spots within a row, I will I have to add an extra roll at the end of the game. If this is the first Lord of the TBR video you're seeing from me, I will link my full playlist. Uh, I think it's on that side actually. I'm starting to get better at this, finally. <laughs> Just tap the screen, there should be an eye icon right up there, and then you click on that, and then it'll take you to my full TBR from September of last year. This month, as always, I am doing the Lord of the TBR, Lord of the Readathon. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will link my blog post down below. It is my original Lord of the Rings inspired readathon. So this is month two. Last month, I gathered my fellowship, sort of, I'll show you later and read nine books for each member of the fellowship. This month, I have to either lay siege to the free lands and read books inspired by battles that took place during the story, or set out from Rivendell and read books inspired by landmarks that the fellowship visited on their way to Mordor. I don't know yet which side I will be. I am thinking that I will be on the free peoples of Middle-earth again. So I'm just gonna basically choose books that I would like to read and then at the end of this video, once I've chosen out all my books, then I will decide if I'm going to be on the Free Peoples of Middle Earth or the Goods or the Sauron's Forces. So I'm going to try for Free Peoples of Middle Earth because more of their prompts fit books that I want to read. So before we start my game, I have to tell you guys how I did in July. Um, so these are all the books that I chose to read in July, along with Reformed by H.L. Burke. So I will post a wrap up later. I am so behind on my wrap-ups. I did not finish all of these. I I figured out something with my reading tastes. I had a lot of hefty reading plans in July, and it didn't work out, I think, for two main reasons. The first reason was because the last month when I finished, like, all the books that I set for myself to read, which was May, I did a calculation, and all the books that I put on that TBR added up to about 2,000 pages in total. So I... I suppose that's kind of like my like baseline of how many pages I read. This month I did the calculations and the books I chose were over were close to 4000 pages worth of reading and yeah, <laughs> your girl didn't finish it. Also, number two reason is because I am currently writing two novels now. I have been writing a novel, Ocean Mage, which I hope to be my debut novel, about a girl who is exiled from her village and becomes a pirate in order to take and then sets out to take revenge on her father's murderers. And another one that I'm working on, which is kind of basically a page one rewrite of my other manuscript that I finished, which is a contemporary novel about a girl who goes to Japan to study abroad. I've been writing those a lot and not doing any reading. These are all the books that I never finished. So I saved The Vagrants from June whenever the last month I chose this was. Didn't get any farther in it. I still stuck on like page 32. I lost the page now. I also never got to The Book Thief, so this one was one that Ari recommended to me, so I'm sorry, Ari, I never got to it. And I also did not ever get to The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This was what came up for Twitter pick. Rather than like saying like, oh, I'm just going to carry these over to next month because I'll never get them read anyway, I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these three back on the shelves and choose them again for a future month. And I am currently yay through Frog Kisser, so I'm going to keep reading Frog Kisser. I'm enjoying so far what I've read. Before we start the game, I have to change the prompt. So I have to change out new author. Just gotta go ahead and shuffle them around a little bit. And let's choose bottom here. Year of Asian Stories. Okay, this one comes up. I have to choose a book written by an Asian author or that takes place in Asia. So, as usual, we are playing with Legolas, and I'm just going to toss him onto the board, and wherever he lands is where I start playing from. All right, close my eyes, toss him up. Okay, so, 
The rules are the, of the game are that I have to visit each section of the board at least once in order to be the most fair and give an equal chance of choosing all the prompts. After my first roll, I am going to have Legolas head this way towards the green board over here. Alright, so, roll number one of the game. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it's a plain brown spot. Twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And it's another plain brown spot, so we have to roll again. Right, so the first prompt in our game is to choose a reread, and I know precisely which book I'm going to choose, because I have to reread this book for the Andreal the Flame of the West bonus for the Lord of the Ravenclaw. Or if I end up being on the side of evil. I can use this book for Dol Guldur because it's about elves. And I'm pretty sure you guys all knew which one I was going to choose. So I'm rereading The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, book two in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I am rereading it. I am so excited. Uh, I haven't reread these books in forever. I reread Fellowship of the Ring recently, last month, and absolutely freaking loved it. Still my favorite, one of my favorite series of all time. And I'm very excited about getting to this one. Right, gonna change out the prompt for reread and pick one. Here we go. Low expectations. So if this prompt comes up, I have to choose a book that I don't think will be a five star rating. Uh, for whatever reason. Could be an author who I previously didn't enjoy reading. It could be a book that has generally bad reviews in general. So yeah, a book that I'm not expecting to love. All right, roll number two. So this time we have already gone through this, this and this board. So this time we're going to go over here and then down that way. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's a red dot, so I have to choose a random, I have to use a random object generator. Okay, the next book is to use a random object generator. So I will have to go on my computer, and I am going to go to perchance.org backslash object. I will put it here on the screen. So here we are at the random object generator. It started on light, but ignore that. That was uh, how it was when I first opened the page. So we're going to go ahead and have it randomize two objects, and then choose a book for each object, and then choose one of those two books. All right. So here we go. Real time. One, two, three. Hamster or wine glass? The objects it generated for me were hamster or wine glass. So I'm going to go take a few minutes to find some books and be right back. Okay, so I have taken a very good look at almost at pretty much all of my books that I own, uh, both TBR and books that I would like to reread. And I can't really find any that have wine glasses on them. Leave a comment down below if you know of any books that have a wine glass on them. I also, I, I, I even like looked on my Goodreads and stuff, and I can't find any wine glasses on the cover. So if you know of a book with wine glasses on the cover, leave it down below. But I found one that could match for Hamster. So we have here The Kingdom of Fantasy by Geronimo Stilton, and he's technically a mouse, but I don't have any books with a hamster on the cover, and mice and hamsters are almost identical. And my game, my rules. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just choose Kingdom of Fantasy for a random object. And we're going to say that Geronimo is close enough to a hamster to be able to count. All right, so we're going to go ahead and change out the prompt for a random object on the cover. Here's all my prompts. I'm just going to go ahead and shuffle them around a little bit. And it seems like prompts on the bottom today are the best. So here we go. Hardcover. If this comes up, I have to choose a book that's in hardcover format. All right. Roll number three. Here we go. And it's a ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's a brown square. So I have to choose a short read. So the next prompt that came up is short read. Those are a few books that could be nice, short, fun little reads. So first we have Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, the graphic novel of the movie, which I really liked. And this is a post-apocalyptic story about... Nausicaa, the princess, the last vestiges of humanity are having a civil war of sorts, and she has to save her people from the 
other kingdoms, and from the toxic jungle that's threatening to engulf the rest of the Earth. We've also got Full Moon Mo Sagashite, which is technically a reread. This is a manga about 12-year-old Mitsuki Koyama, who wants to be a singer, but she has a th- cancer in her throat called sarcoma, which prevents her from singing. And if she were to undergo surgery, she'd have to essentially lose all of her vocal cords because of the position of the tumor. And one day, she's visited by these mysterious spirits who call themselves Shinigami, or death spirits. And they end up forming a promise to help Mitsuki achieve her dream of becoming a singer before she dies, in, before, she's sched, before she's fated to die one year from their meeting day. We have one that I'm probably going to choose, which is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. It's about a girl, it's about a young woman who works part-time at a convenience store, and she's very happy with her life. She's very happy just working part-time at the convenience store. It was on my Goodreads Want to Read for a while, and then when my brother gave me a gift card for Book Sync last month, I treated myself to this because it's like 15 bucks for this. So I used that gift card to buy myself a copy of this little teeny thing. I really think I'm going to love it, and I think I'm going to choose it. So she ha- she actually has some aspects of Asperger's Syndrome, uh, which is like she doesn't understand social cues, and she like copies other people around her to learn how to fit in, which is kind of what autistic people do, and it just looks really cute. Looking forward to this one. It's super cute, and I can't wait to get to it. Okay, roll number four. So this time we're going to have Lego Let's Go down this way and around. So here we go. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, got to roll again. Six. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's another plain brown spot. So we roll it one more time. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's a purple spot, so I have to choose a Year of Asian Stories book. So the next prompt that came up is Year of Asian Stories. I do have two. Both of them are graphic novels. I showed both of them to you guys earlier. Full Moon Osagashite or Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. And I think I'm going to go ahead and choose Full Moon Osagashite for this one. Just because of these two graphic novels, I'm more excited about this one, but I would try and like to read this one as well. But I just realized we never changed the prompt for the brown spot, so we're going to go ahead and change out both of those prompts at the same time. So first, let's go ahead and change out the prompt for purple for Year of Asian Stories. Alright, so I have all my stack of prompts here. Let's change out the prompt for purple, Year of Asian Stories. Not my shelf. Uh, this is it. I don't think this has ever come up before, has it? So if this comes up, I have to choose a book that is, as it says, not my shelf. So, for example, a book that I got... So, basically, I have to choose a book that comes from another room in the house. Uh, we have lots of bookshelves in various places. We have a guest bedroom, which has some nice bookshelves in it with some good books. We also have my mom's office, my mom's, like, home office area, which has a ton of bookshelves in it. If this comes up, I have to choose one of those books. Okay, gonna, now we have to change out the prompt for brown for short read. So let's go ahead and shuffle them all about a bit. Let's get this one. Box of reading. Okay, this is a, this is an old prompt. This one hasn't come up in forever. Oh my gosh, I gotta actually like go get my box of reading and like make sure it's updated now. All right, this is roll number five, I believe. I'll check in a minute. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it's another purple spot, so I have to choose Not My Shelf. I found some books for Not My Shelf. So, our house actually has way more children's classics than I first realized. Like, I forgot we had a a copy of The Secret Garden, or Charlotte's Web, or Winnie the Pooh, uh, which are three children's classics I'm very excited to read. But I also found this one... Facing the Wave, A Journey in the Wake of the Tsunami, which is a book about the Great East Japan Earthquake uh, on March 11, 2011. And for those of you who don't know, I uh, have a very vested personal interest in the Great East Japan Earthquake. When I was in college, I joined an initiative 
through the journalism department, and we traveled to Fukushima, Japan, to investigate what the situation essentially was like three years after the disaster. So it's like, you know, all this media coverage happens like right after, but then they kind of get forgotten about. So we wanted to kind of like remind everyone. I will leave our website down below. I will also see if I can link it in the info card. Maybe I'm always trying to hype our website, but I'm going to read Charlotte's Web for the Not My Shelf prompt. Going to change out the prompt for Not My Shelf. So here's all the prompts. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle them around and choose that one. Paperback. Okay, if this one comes up, I have to choose a book that is a paperback. So we have hardcover, and now we have paperback. Okay, this is roll number six. So this time we're going to go down to that board and up again. Again, following the rule of visiting one board at least once. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's a plain brown spot, so we have to roll again. Eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And it's another plain brown spot, so we're rolling again. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's a fiery red spot, so I have to choose a book by Garth Nix. The next prompt that came up was Garth Nix, and as you probably missed, because my camera wasn't recording it, I kind of hyperventilated a little bit when I took all these books off my shelves. So first we have Mr. Monday, which is the first book in the Keys to the Kingdom series. My lovely, awesome friend Ari gifted this to me for my birthday, and I really want to get to it soon. However, it doesn't fit any of Lord of the Rings prompts that I will be needing to fill. So, you know, I since I want to prioritize readathon books, maybe not this month. I'm sorry, Ari. I feel, but I feel like since I disappointed you last month with the not reading book thief, <laughs> then we have the Seventh Tower, which also I have not gotten to yet, which I'm surprised at. The other day, I was watching some of my older YouTube videos and trying to figure out which books would. I should prioritize because they've been on my shelves the longest. And then I realized that this has been on my shelves for like a year now, and I've never, and I've never actually gotten to it. So I really want to get to it soon. Uh, it's an omnibus of books one to three in the Tower series, I guess, the Seventh Tower. So it has like the Fall, which is book one, and then Castle, which is apparently book two, and then Anir, which is book three. So I would basically, if I were to choose this, I would read just the first book, which is the Fall, and then read and then book two would be a different book. So I could choose this. I do want to prioritize it. And then we have Across the Wall and Golden Hand, which are the continuations of the Abhorsen series. And Across the Wall is has a short story for Abhorsen's trilogy of the Abhorsen series and also other short stories that he's also written. Oh, I'm so conflicted. <sighs> So, in the interest of prioritizing my TBR veterans, I am going to go ahead and read The Fall, which is the first book in the Seventh Tower series. Got to go ahead and change out the prompt for Garth Nix. So, let's go ahead and shuffle these around and choose this one. Fantasy! Okay, this is a good one. If this comes up, I just choose any fantasy book I like, which is my favorite genre. Okay, roll number seven. So, this time... We're going to travel through this board, and then because there's no pathways up that way, we have to go through the brown board again, and then up to the green. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and it's a plain brown spot, so we're rolling again. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's a brown square, so I have to use my box of reading. So the next prompt is the box of reading, which hasn't come up in so long. I can't remember the last time this actually came up in the game. So because it never comes up anymore, I have gone so long without ed without like updating it. So it might pull out some weird books that I've already read, stuff like that. So we're just going to shake this up. And my camera battery's dying. Ghost Night by Cornelia Funke, which... One of my, Funke is another one of my favorite authors, and I don't know why I have never read this book before. I don't know anything about this book. Uh, it's about a boy who has to go off to boarding school, and then he meets a new friend and ghosts, and they have to summon a ghost of a long dead knight. And it looks pretty interesting. It looks like it could be like a paranormal mystery sort of thing. 
kind of different from her other works, I guess, but it's Funke, so I'll give it a try. So I'll just shuffle my prompts all around here, and we'll choose this one. Debut novel. So if this comes up, I have to choose a novel that is that author's debut work, essentially. Well, number eight. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it's an Eye of Sauron, so it's my choice. Okay, don't mind if I do. I'm going to pick something, and I am picking... You Normally, this would be like a super hard choice. I would like stand here for an hour and be like, what book am I going to choose? But I am so excited. Heroes Flight, book two in the Heralds of Valdemar series. If you don't know what the series is about, this is basically... Uh, this is like an entire, like, Lord of the Rings style thing where it's like a huge, like, world, and then you have little individual stories within the world. So this series follows Talia, who is a runaway girl who becomes the Queen's own herald. And in this book, and in book one, she went from runaway orphan to runaway foster child of her father's relatives to the castle where she became a student, a herald student. So in this one, I'm, I think in this one, she's graduating from the Herald's Academy and she's going to start actually working as a herald. And I don't know anything about this book, except I'm so excited about it. I can't wait to read it. We have to add one more roll. I got three plain brown spots in a row on the very first roll of the game. So I'm going to add in one more roll and choose one more book. I'm going to change out the prompt for Corinne Choice. So let's pick this one. Standalone. Okay, if this one comes up, I choose a book that is not part of a series, that is just on its own. Eight. One, two, three, four. Whoops. Five, six, seven, eight. And it's an Eye of Sauron spot, so I have to choose a standalone. So the last prompt of the game is to choose a standalone book. Uh, so a book that is not part of a series. Yet another book that I bought for myself using the gift card. The gift card was like 40 bucks. Thank you so much, Evan. I love you. You're the best brother ever. And so I got Canadian Store Woman, Arrow's Flight, and this one as well. And yeah, it looks so super cute. It's got, it ticks all the boxes for me because it looks super cute. It's not too long, so I'm not overwhelmed by it. And the author, Alex Gino, is a non-binary, gender-fluid author. So they are neither male nor female. And that's awesome. And I love supporting, like, marginalized authors. And then this is also apparently about a boy who is actually a transgender girl. And she's trying to get the part of Charlotte in Charlotte's Web which is another reason I thought it would be cool to read this is because I'm reading the novel already and now I'm reading this. So this is kind of cool that I'm reading the original novel and then a book about the novel. But it just looks super cute and adorable and I'm just so excited about this one. So here are all of my books that I'll be reading this month. Now I have to go figure out which books will match with to read it on prompts. So I will be right back. Okay, that didn't take as long as I thought, because the choice was really easy. So, for this month, these are all the books I'm reading for The Lord of the Rings. So let me just go through them with you really quick. I'll be staying with the free peoples of Middle-earth this month. The prompts are inspired by various landmarks that the Fellowship visited from the time they left Rivendell until they arrived at, until basically like the rest of the movie. So first is Karadras to read a book with snow, ice, or winter in the title or with snow or ice on the cover. So I have chosen Full Moon Osagashite for that prompt because it has snow flakes falling behind Mitsuki. The Minds of Moria to read a book with monsters or non-human creatures. And I just took a quick glance through this book and there are definitely non-human monster creatures in here. Like I opened it to one random page and it was like the, t the monster was, it literally said, like the monster is following them or something. So I'm using the fall for this Moria prompt. The next prompt is Lothlorien to read a book with trees on the cover. For that one, I'm using uh, The Kingdom of Fantasy because if you look here, 
Oh, on the front too. There's some trees here and there's some trees here. The next prompt is the River Anduine and to read a book with blue cover. So for that one, I'm using Convenience Store Woman and I am so excited for this book. The next prompt is Rohan to read a book about horses or with a horse on the cover. And I could have chosen either Arrow's Flight or Ghost Knight for this one. But for Rohan, I'm using Arrow's Flight to fill this prompt. Because Gondor is to read a book with a gray cover. And Ghost Knight fits that prompt perfectly. And then we ran into a bit of a pickle. Because the prompt for Mordor is to read a book with a black cover. And the darkest cover in that TBR is Seventh Tower. But it's like a greenish blue, not like pure black. So as the creator of the readathon, I'm like, that doesn't count as black. But I reread Fellowship of the Ring last month and earned Fat Arwen's gift. And that means that you can switch out any book on the TBR you're not feeling and read Arrows of the Queen instead. So since I've been wanting to reread this book anyway, especially because I'm going to start book two this month, I've decided that I would just not worry about it and I'm just going to use Arrows of the Queen for that prompt. The last book of the readathon is to read Two Towers, or in my case, reread, and earn Anduril the Flame of the West to earn another bonus power for next month. Those books, those eight books, I will also be reading Charlotte's Web by E.B. White, which came up for Not My Shelf, and George by Alex Gino, which came up for Standalone. Uh, I also forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video, but I still need to read Reformed, and review it. I will put the cover here. Uh, my review for this is due on August 26th, so that's going to be read this month. Here we go. I'll also continue to read Frog Kisser, too, which is by Garth Nix, so I'm very, you know, I'm, it's Garth Nix. I'm going to love it. So here is my entire stack. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a comment down below telling me, I don't know, tell me, I really want to read more children's classics, so tell me down below your favorite children's classic that I should read. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my content and help support my platform. I'm Corinne, also known as The Discerning Reader, and I make videos talking about the books you should be reading so you don't have to spend hours scouring the New York Times and Goodreads bestseller lists to find the next book you want to read. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! -nee!